This is Twit. What I found was fascinated about the whole Copilot plus PC is like it's like they're afraid to say Windows on ARM. Yeah. Oh, did like, they not really uh, mention that? Well, they mentioned well, the Snapdragon I, Elite, I, right? They don't That's want people right. to yeah. think of it, right? They, you know, I um, guess so because it has not gone well the previous yeah, times they've attempted. There's some it. bad vibes to it. Yeah. I, here's the thing. So, in the history of Windows, obviously, there's been different ways to differentiate different versions, or whatever. You know, we've had product SKUs for a long time: NT Workstation, NT Server. Yep. Windows XP Home, Windows XP Professional, right? Mm-hmm. We still have Home and Pro today. We went off the rails for a while with many product additions for a few versions, but um, so there's that. We've also had these kind of specialty versions of Windows, right? Like Media Center Edition, Tablet PC, Ultra mm-hmm. Mobile PC, whatever. So Media Center. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, so Copilot plus PC, I there's a lot of questions. Yeah. Right? I, 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 I mean, it just feels to me like they're trying to force ARM into existence. And so wrapping it in a Copilot blanket, they think it's going to be better. It, it's also a, a, a strangely limiting way to roll out exciting new features because you have to, you, there's going to be a 24H2. Yeah. Actually, there's going to be two 24H2s, but let's not get too convoluted here. <laughs> Yet. Yeah. And when you get a Copilot Plus T, uh, PC, you will get 24H2 with additional Copilot Plus PC features that will never be made available to anyone else. Right. Which is... And, and this is why I, I, I'm still trying to reconcile this in my brain, but I, I guess I'm going to say my, my educated guess at this point is that this will play out like Media Center and Tablet PC, that in the beginning, you're going to have to buy a special kind of PC to get this stuff. Right. And then at some time... It's going to be on everything. Yeah, they'll just roll it into Windows. And part of that's going to be the hardware is going to advance, so everybody's going to have that capability. That's right. Yeah, exactly. That's I'm just guessing because they're, they're not going to talk about that. Well, I mean, I mean, like there's a question of could we get a Snapdragon on a motherboard and build a PC with it? Oh, that is like, like I said, there are many questions. Yeah. That, is, that is absolutely one of them. So, Although not that Qualcomm has ever done socketed Snapdragon. It's know. always been SOC, like yep. directly on the board. Yep. This is a new world. Yeah. I, we don't know. Um, but the fact that Asus is making a machine gives me con- the possibility that Asus might make a motherboard. Yeah. I, I don't know how these systems differentiate from each other internally, right? Mm-hmm. Um, all, uh, I think it was eight or nine of the top PC makers and Microsoft are all making their own computers based on this platform. Are they, is there some common component to all of the motherboards that's, you know, and then some additional stuff that some companies are doing on the start? I, I, we don't know yet, right? It just happened. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we'll see. I, uh, anyway, this event was built, or a lot of people expected this event to be a Surface event, basically. Obviously, it was kind of a, I guess we'll call it the Copilot Plus PC launch event. It was only Qualcomm, Intel, and AMD will eventually release chipsets that will allow PCs to be called Copilot Plus PCs, basically. So I guess the Ultra doesn't qualify? It does not. Interesting. And yeah, so the, the, the differentiated there, the problem for the Core Ultra is the NPU. Right. Right. So the MPU has to deliver at least 40 tops to qualify. That one, I think, was it 13 tops, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah. Um, the Qualcomm current chipset is 45 tops. Uh, Intel has already said we will have a 40. Well, actually, we're going <laughs> to. It's not, it's not even a Moore's Law problem. Then. This is just a fabbing problem. Yeah. Make a better fab, you'll do good. Yeah. So both AMD and Intel will deliver by the end of the year. We're going to we'll get to a bit of that in, in a moment. But uh, for now, the first gen, the first la- the launch lineup is all Qualcomm based, right? And it's pretty good support there, right? I mean, I think the first gen Qualcomm. Maybe there were two PC makers at the launch. Uh, the there was only one decent PC based on the most recent chipset to date, right? Uh, which was Lenovo, I think that uh, X thirteen, I believe. They did also mention the Snapdragon for devs. A little, yeah. a little. Yeah, we're gonna. Know, yeah, we'll get to that. Mini PC unit. So I, that's exactly. that thing's looking good. Yeah, um, I think I'd like one of those. I do too. I, yeah. I might. That might become my my office, my home office computer. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I, you know, just coming into this, I will say there was a lot of secrecy on Microsoft's part mm-hmm. um, for some reason. Well, I get it, but they provided the press with uh, a bill of materials <laughs> that did not include anything related to Windows at all, which was very notable. Um, and then we showed up uh, on Monday and they kind of revealed it to a, a room full of people, which they did not live stream. So we were all allowed to kind of live tweet it or whatever we did. Right. 
Um, and then they have, then they at the end of uh, the event announced to the world what they had done. And then um, I, I think you can. Well, no, I know you can. You can go watch the video now if you want to see the event. Right. And you've ordered one. Yeah, I ordered one. I literally you Yusuf sent Medi, me the screenshot. Yeah. Yusuf Medi is up on stage, <laughs> and he says, "And you can pre-order now at service.com. Boop, boop, boop. Fun. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I thought I th I'm sure there were people who thought I was joking when I said I was going to order one of these as soon as I could, but he worked. I wouldn't. I was not joking. So the the two Microsoft devices look good. I mean, they're as expected, right? Mm -hmm. no, no surprises there. Um, the third party PCs that they announced. Uh, you know, very in quality, I would say. Yeah. Um, these are premium PCs, all of them. The base price is technically, I think, nine ninety nine, but the cheapest one I'm aware of is a an Acer Swift, which is uh, ten fifty, I think, to start. Mm -hmm. uh, minimum specs: sixteen gigs of RAM and two hundred fifty six gigs of storage. Not enough of either. Yeah, and and those are tied to the requirements of the onboard SLMs, of which there are up to forty. I, I know. It's just crazy. Hmm. Um, yeah. What's, what's an SLM? Yeah. What, an onboard? Uh, small language model, the yeah. on device. Oh, the uh, models. Model. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, it, this is a weird thing. And then we'll get into some of the features, but one of the big ones, one of the controversial ones, also has its own pretty heady storage requirements. Uh, yeah. So this is part of the differentiation and probably part of the excuse slash reason why they're not just giving it to everyone because. Uh, well, because of all reasons. Um, actually, I just remembered one. Uh, I have a little list of the people that Microsoft upset yesterday the other day, and I forgot one of them. <laughs> oh. I'll just add that. Oh. Uh, they upset everybody, but we'll get to that. Um, so, yeah, hour-long event, um, a bunch of AI features like we expected. Mm -hmm. The big question we had wanted to answer was, would this be enough to trigger a round of upgrades the likes of which we have not seen? Yeah, <laughs> everybody needs to buy a new machine. Yeah. And I'm, I'm going to say... Don't you think that's the goal? It is the goal. Yeah. I don't think they met that bar, personally. You know, um, they didn't show off software. They yeah. just gave me a lot of promises. Well, they showed off some, you know, some features. I, it's, uh, this stuff is, is hard. I, I, you, I think you were, the, you were the one who originally kind of said, you know, AI is not a... There's no killer app. There's a bunch of small yeah. things. And depending on your needs, depending on who you are, depending on the types of things you use a PC for, you might have seen something in that event where you're like, oh, I have to get this thing, right? Mm -hmm. And I think for people who are uh, creatives, this might be of interest. Road Warriors, obviously, for the battery life. Because um, there is just two things, right? There is the co-pilot features, but it's also Windows on ARM, yeah, which is battery life, efficiency, mm -hmm. quiet. And a lack of drivers if you have anything esoteric. Yeah. And, <laughs> and what software will, like, yeah. look, from the, if somebody asks you, you're going to do a .NET Rocks on Windows on ARM, it's like, it's going to be a two-minute show. It's like, yeah. it runs. I, I, Thanks very much. Years ago, well, it would have been, I guess, 2017 or whatever they announced the first version of this for 10. I said, you know, if this thing is successful, it will just be the most boring release in the history of mankind yeah. because it, it should just work. There should be no drama. Um, I think they're mostly going to meet that bar, but there are always those people who have specialized devices of whatever kind. Well, it's a great question when you talk about that device, which is like, how do I print? Yeah. Well, um, that stuff's all built in. It, it, ba the basics, right? Yeah. Which should meet most people's needs. But yeah, if you have a crazy 3D printer with specific software or whatever it yeah. might be. Hell, it's the scanner. Yeah. You any number to, of things where you're going to bump into some issues. Yeah. Yeah. But you know they're shooting for the mainstream with the first version, and uh, yeah, I think it, I think it's there for that audience. Mm -hmm. um, I, I actually do believe that the the efficiency stuff, battery life, the relative silence, we're going to get to that, um, will really appeal to people. That people have maybe looked over at the MacBook Air a little bit and uh, said, you know, I, I kind of like some of the stuff that's going on there. Um, I'd like that in Windows, maybe. One of the um, things the Mac the uh, MacBreak Weekly team pointed out is this: these do have fans. I mean, how quiet are they? Yeah. So it, it's I. So I have good news there. I mean, the bad news is, yeah, they have fans. By the way, they all have fans. This is one hundred percent across the board. Yeah. It's a personal embarrassment to me that I never thought to ask Qualcomm or anybody about this. Not just yesterday, but before yesterday, I spent the, five the, hours in the room. The airs that they're things. emulating have no fans, so they really are silent. They don't get hot That's right. either. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here's the thing. Um, the good news is I, Ryan Shrout, who uh, formerly of Intel, who was now a partner in a uh, kind of an analyst firm, 
uh, was commissioned by Microsoft to discover what was really going on with these computers and compare them to the uh, to its predecessor. Oh, I'm sorry, it's a, they used the Surface uh, laptop for the tests, compared it to the previous gen Surface laptop and also to the MacBook Air M3. And um, these guys, I've known Ryan forever. I, I trust him as much as you can trust any human being. He's reliable. Um, this thing either kicked the crap out of or basically broke even with the MacBook Air on everything. Hmm. Um, almost everything. The, the one weird one was uh, using Chrome, the web browser native version, was more efficient on the Mac. But I think part of that has to do with it's been around for a long time. And uh, the Windows version is not. And also, this falls into that category we had talked about before where, you know, it doesn't have to actually beat the thing. It just has to kind of play the game, you know, be in the ballpark. Right. And it is in the ballpark. Like, you know, you're not, no one's going to sit there and look at Chrome back and forth and say, wow, it's uh, loading those web pages 0. 0.001 seconds. Oh, somebody faster. will. But we're just going to ignore them because yeah, they're silly. That's <laughs> not, look, people buy a, the, the People are shopping for Mac OS or Windows. Yeah. It's not okay. And then they say, okay, well, I'm a Mac guy. What hardware is there? I'm a PC guy. What hardware is there? They don't say, okay. uh, you know, they might say, I, w I like the MacBook Air. What, what, what's comparable in a PC? And this, I, I, would, I, this would be fine. I think there's a, I think there actually is a market of people who have had bad experiences on Windows and are starting to look around. Oh, mm -hmm. a big so this is an opportunity. <laughs> on, yeah. Well, that's, that's what I mean. So this, this is an opportunity for Microsoft to Save say, them. look, I, yeah. We know you want these qualities that you like to see in the Mac. Uh, do we have them over here? So, but that's why I, I don't think it has to beat it in benchmarks. It has to be comparable. Yeah. It well, as it turns out, it beats them in bit. It's yeah. Much, yeah. No, it's yeah but then you yeah. being also question benchmarks full up anyway. Right? Of course, like, no, no. I, but that was the point of mm -hmm. uh, my conversations with Ryan uh, over the past couple of days were very enlightening. In fact, I'm probably gonna do an interview with him uh, as soon as I can, so he can kind of just. You can all hear it from him. Um, but he also has just sort of real world anecdotal experiences. And he's like, I never ran into any issues. So if you look at a MacBook Air and um, you close the lid and look at the very back of it, you'll see there's a there's an area to vent heat at the back. It doesn't vent heat through the bottom, which is one of the problems on a lot of PCs, because if you want to do put it on a soft surface like a bed or a couch or something, it, you yeah, can't, that gets sealed off. Yeah. Your lap gets, gets hot, hot, hot in a hurry. Battery kicks in. You get that yeah. funnel effect. We're also yeah, familiar with. Yeah, and your CPU gears down. Like yeah. all those things. So the uh, the laptops, uh, these laptops all do have fans. The Surface devices, at least, I can't speak to the third party devices. Very very quiet. Um, the Surface laptop, the one they're comparing to the MacBook Air, and my God, did they compare it to the MacBook Air? Right. Someone should make a clip of just them saying MacBook Air, and, and they, I bet it, they said it 150 <sighs> times. Once was a time where they never said their competitors' product names, and you now know? they're saying it too much. Yeah. We get it. You want to beat this thing, Jeez. Yeah. Anyway, it vents exactly the same way as the MacBook Air, so it does not have that. Out the back. Yeah, you don't have that problem. It's going to be fine. Mm -hmm. He said he has the the DBA measurements um, under load, not under load, et cetera. He, he said, this thing is silent. He said, but it does have a fan. It does have a fan. A um, fan that thin. Like, it's got to make noise. So, I, MacBook or Mac people, Apple people will appreciate the comparison is to the MacBook Pro. And most of those people will tell you, because it has a fan, fans. Um, yeah, it comes on sometimes, obviously, in the load, but it's, it's very quiet. Yeah. Um, and it's, it's, it's apparently landing in that area. Okay. So, um, very quiet. Very, very quiet. So, that's good. I, am, I, was, I was not happy when I discovered this. I... For whatever it's worth, I went into that showcase they had afterwards. I picked up the laptop. I looked under it. I looked all around it. You don't see any dots or vents or anything. I'm like, nice. And I just presumed it was solid. I walked out of there and yeah. I, mean, I thought it was no, no fan and mm -hmm. I was wrong. So that's, you know, that this is the thing I've been talking about, I think, for seven, eight, whatever months. You know, I'm waiting for that shoe to drop. I'm waiting for that day when some bad news comes out <laughs> and ruins the whole thing. And we got right up to the launch day. And I finally got that bad news, and it was the fan. And it did have that moment of doubt for me. <laughs> but I think it's fine. I think it's going to be fine. It I wish it seemed like that bad of news, really. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. But it was that kind of scary moment, right? It was like, oh, come on, really? You're going to just ruin this on the day it launches? Yeah. <sighs>
Hey, it's me, Leo Laporte. I hope you've enjoyed this little snippet from Windows Weekly. If you want to see more and want to catch the whole show, you can subscribe in your favorite podcast client or visit our website, twit.tv slash WW. And of course, there's links right below me.